dark browser entered the web browser ring in July of 2023. It was an instant hit. The style, layout, and features immediately went viral, and everyone was switching to this new software. There was a huge problem though. Arc was only available on Mac OS. That meant that Windows and Linux users didn't have access to this browser. When I first discovered this browser, there was so much hype. I was so excited to power on my PC, go online, and download the Arc browser. I cannot tell you how bummed I was to learn that Arc wasn't available on Windows. I signed up for the waitlist, but I had no idea when I would get my hands on. Finally, almost a year later, Arc is available to download, but is it as good as it was hyped up to be? Welcome to TechSplash and in this video, I'm going to show you how to download the new Arc for Windows, talk about the pros and cons of the browser, and determine if it's the right web browser for you. Let's dive right into it. Okay, so here's how you can download the Arc browser on Windows. What you're going to want to do is take your web browser that you currently have, I'm using Firefox, in the search box you're going to want to type in Arc Browser for Windows. And once it shows up, just hit on Arc for Windows from the website. To download Arc for Windows, head to arc.net slash download, just click on this link, and then hit this download Arc for Windows 11. I believe currently it's only available for Windows 11 and not for Windows 10 yet. Just hit this if you're on Windows 11. It should start installing the installer. Once it's completely installed, just double click on it. And now here's the setup window. Just wait for it to download. click on this arrow and it will ask you to create an account. I've already created an account so I'm going to go ahead and sign in but if this is your first time on Arc Browser just go ahead and fill in these details. And here we are on the Arc Browser. This is what you'll see when you first download it. You can go ahead and hit this Arc Basics and basically they will be teaching you how to use the browser. Then once you're done with this you can go ahead right click on this delete it and you can delete the Arc Basics folder. And that's it, now you're on the Arc Browser. If you're a Windows 10 user, unfortunately the Arc Browser hasn't come out for you yet. That being said, I found this method to get the app on Windows 10 by a Reddit user. I haven't tested it out, but if you decide to do so, let me know how it goes in the comments. Now, let's talk about the pros and cons of the Arc Browser for Windows. So for the pros, we first have the Windows 11 feel of the Arc Browser. The menus and the UI make Arc feel like a built-in Windows app. Next, we have the simplicity and minimalism of the design. You can hide the sidebar, you can reappear it, you can access the control center here, you can copy the link with the press of a single button here, and that is pretty much it. If you go to this menu, there isn't an overwhelming amount of options, just a few essential ones that you might need on a day-to-day -day basis. Next, we have the productive and efficient layout of the Arc Browser. As you can see, all of the UI, menus, tabs, and bookmarks are on the left here. There's much more vertical room to read longer documents, because if you're looking at a long document, you really need that vertical space instead of the horizontal space. Another amazing feature and pro of the Arc Browser is the split view. If you go right up here to the top right side, you can hit split view options. And here you can select how you want to split your screen. You can add a right split and click on anything you're working on or even something new and just click it. And here you have a really nice split view. Instead of working in two different windows, you can work within the same window but on two different web pages. If you have a widescreen monitor, this feature will allow you to get the most out of it. Another amazing thing about the Arc Browser is that you can create folders for tabs. If you go ahead and right click here on the side menu, you can hit new folder and it creates a new folder. You can name this folder whatever you like. And you can simply drag your tabs over into the folder. And now you have a collapsible folder. An extension of this is the spaces feature. If you go and click the Arc logo, and go to spaces and new space, you can create a brand new space. This feature allows you to completely organize your browsing. It only shows you the tabs that are relevant to your current process. While all of my tabs are in space one, I can head over to the all caps space tab that I just created and it gives me a blank slate that I can use and start some new work. The next amazing feature is that you can hide the sidebar. This is really useful so that you can just focus on the web page that you're on. There's no distractions, no obstructions. You're not distracted by the UI. You're not always trying to switch tabs. If you want to just focus on one tab on one web page, 
this is the way to go. The final pro is the privacy that the browser company gives you. The browser company, the creators of Arc, are very open about everything they put into the browser. They are always communicating with the public and they document every new feature and change. This is very respectable and it communicates to us that the browser is very secure. Now we have the cons. The first con is that it's pretty heavy. As you can see, it uses up a lot of RAM and processing power. One thing that I've noticed is that YouTube videos will lag, stop, and buffer, but the video is loading in fine. So the browser isn't as snappy as you might hope. Another con is that it might be a little too simplistic. If you go over here to the menu, there's a decent amount of options. But if you want to adjust more settings, and you click here on settings, this is what pops up. I wouldn't call this a settings page at all. You can't adjust your default search engine, default screen zoom, font size, or hardware acceleration. That's quite stupid. I found these settings recently due to a helpful Reddit user. In order to access the actual browser settings, you need to go to a new tab and type in arc colon slash slash settings. Now, when you click on that, you will be met with the actual settings page of the browser. Here, you can access all of the settings that you need. I just wish it was much easier to access for the average user. Also, and this may be a deal breaker for some of you, you must create an account to access the browser. There's no other way to access it. Apparently the Windows version of Arc is missing some really cool features and selling points that the real Arc browser has. That means that we can't truly figure out if this browser is good or not on Windows yet. It's basically in beta. Some of these missing features are the customization of certain web pages, an AI assistant tool, and a cool library shelf. We won't be able to truly judge this browser before these features come to the world of Windows. Here's the verdict. Arc is an amazing, well-rounded browser. It allows for a very high level of productivity and organization, and it's nice on the eyes. If that sounds like the software for you, I would definitely recommend Arc. That being said, if you want a super light and snappy browser, there are much better options, like Firefox. If you're looking for the most private and secure option, there's Brave. Want something more customizable? There's Vivaldi. And if you want some super cool gimmicky features, there's Opera and Opera GX. My point is that there are other browsers that are excellent at what they do, but if you want to try a new, modern, elegant, and productivity boosting web browser, you should definitely give Arc a try. Once they add more features, maybe it will appear to you even more. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing if you'd like to see more of this. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.